Hey everyone, Chris here with another filler episode, and today I thought I'd talk about hmm, what would be considered the oldest piece of computer hardware that I own. Yeah, this is my um, Tandy 1000 SX computer, and it. I don't know how to put it's just big. It's like a monster computer. This thing is... It's big. Anyways. And heavy. Okay. So what I want to do today is plug it into my television over there and show you guys how the system actually works in its own right. Now, it is kind of old and some parts of it don't work perfectly anymore. Like the disk, the, the disk drive works perfectly fine because that was overhauled roughly around the same point in time. This thing died. This is the hard drive for the computer. It's a 20 megabyte hard drive, and yeah, I know it's, it's big, but only has about a 200th of the space of a four gigabyte memory card. Yeah, it's, the one thing I found really ni nice about, well, I don't know if you say nice, interesting about this hard drive, is that you know how most hard drives they have that sort of grindy noise when they're being accessed? This thing beeps. Beeps. I mean seriously, beeps. It's just, <laughs> what kind of hard drive beeps when it's accessed? <laughs> I wish I really wish it worked still, because then you'd be able to hear it in all its coolness. Because that's just cool. It beeps, it doesn't grind. I also have the keyboard here, and as you can see, the Tandy 1000 keyboard is well, it's kind of typical of keyboards nowadays. There are some interesting differences, though. Like, I mean, right down here, you have caps lock at the very bottom and control above it, unlike most keyboards where they're kind of switched. Escape is below the F1 key. There's no plus or minus on the numeric keypad. Alt is right up there. That's the Alt key. It's not down here or here. It's up there. And it's kind of missing some other things. NumLock is right here. The caps lock and NumLock keys, they have lights on them to indicate when they're on instead of having the lights up here. And there's no scroll lock. Oh well. And yeah, it's also kind of weird that it has this strange 8-pin circular connection. It's not PS2 or anything like that. I don't know anything that would accept a connection like this. But eh, whatever works. And I actually also have a joystick for this thing, but this thing is, it's never worked properly. Not even when it was new. I actually used to have a Gravis joystick for this computer, and it was a really good joystick. It was clear base. It was, I don't know what happened to it. It got lost at some point. I mean, technically, this wasn't even my computer. Like, my dad bought this when I was like five or six years old and gave it to me because he had nothing else to do with it. So, yeah. Anyways, let's check out some gameplay. Okay, I've got it nice and dark in here now, so you can see that screen better. Now, let's get going. Yeah, it really was that loud, the fan. That would be the disk drive. Five and a quarter inch floppy disk for DOS. Which I probably should have put in before I boot this thing, but there we go. Okay then. Seems like my DOS disk is not working very not well. Um
I have other discs. Give me a moment. Okay, so it seems as though if I pushed the ignore button enough times, it actually did get me to the DOS prompt. So that's a good thing. But now, what game am I going to play? Hmm. Um, let's do Action Fighter, because that's the one I was going to review for episode 11 and it kind of fell through. Works on this thing. So yeah, as you can see, it works perfectly fine on this system. Actually, let me zoom into the television, then you can get a better idea of what it looks like on the screen. Okay, so Action Fighter here is fairly, well, I wouldn't say typical, because it's really interesting in that you first start out as a motorcycle, and you pick up these power pellets from A to F, once you get up to D, your motorcycle transforms into a car, and then once you get up to F, you're actually able to take to the skies and shoot things down from the skies. And all your missions seem to end that way, going up against submarines and tanks and stuff. The only gripe I have with this game is even with the Tandy enhancements, specifically with the distortion effects on some of the sound effects, the... well... Yeah, that, that's an excuse. That's the worst sound effect in the game, and you have to listen to it every single time you fire your weapons while you're airborne. Quite frequently, when I was playing this game as a child, I would actually go through the main se driving section with the sound on, and then when I get to the flying section, I turn the sound off. It was that bad. But the gameplay itself is pretty good. It plays okay with the keyboard. It plays... Eh. Okay with the joystick too, though again, I haven't really had a decent joystick for this computer for far too long. Here you go, Thexter, on my original Tandy 1000 system. It actually plays much like it did in DOSBox. Um, some of the colors are a little weird though on the screen. I think that's just because I'm using the composite output on my computer here. I mean, the computer was originally designed to connect to an RGB monitor, not a television set. But the Tandy 1000 actually has the capability of going into TV mode, which makes the graphics appear much better when you actually output to a television screen. Though, yeah, this game plays okay with a joystick, but it really is much better with the keyboard because you don't act, you can't accidentally activate your shields when you're playing with a keyboard because it's a separate button.
I had a bunch of Sierra titles, actually, and King's Quest was one of my first ones. And I kind of really liked these graphical adventure things, despite the fact they were stupidly hard for the wrong reasons. But the thing is, you got to interact with it in such a unique way, because instead of just doing actions or clicking on things with a mouse or something, you actually type in exactly what it is you want to do. So if you want to look around, you type in look around. If you want to look at a, the moat there, you just type in look at moat. And it makes things a lot more interactive the way I see it because you can actually tell the game exactly what it is you want to do. And this can make for some interesting puzzles. Like, I mean, there's a puzzle particularly later on where you're given a bowl that you have to give to somebody and this bowl can magically fill with stew. But what you can do is you can either give them the bowl with the stew in it or you can give them the bowl empty and then sh use the fill command to fill it with stew right in front of their eyes. So it's like... It, it puts a whole new perspective on the game, being able to type in what you want to do. But then there's stupid deaths like that one, where you just push the rock from the wrong angle and there, you're squashed. Yeah. That was common in Sierra games. Especially these ones. But hey, I still like them. Here's a game I tried to get working on a newer system of mine, but I just couldn't because of the stupid copy protection. It really gets in the way with a lot of these old Tandy games because a lot of the ways to get around copy protection are made for the generic versions of these games, like the ones that were produced for EGA systems. So when I have a Tandy specific game like Test Drive here, where I have the Tandy specific version and all the forms of breaking the copyright protection are based on the EGA, mo the EGA version of Test Drive. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. But, so yeah, Test Drive is, well, <laughs> oh man. I hated this game with a passion. I can never get good at it. And the funny thing is, this is one of the first games I own for this thing. I think part of the reason it does, doesn't work is because it was designed around joystick support. And using the keyboard with this game is just insane, because you can't hold the keyboard keys down. You have to push them once for every single little bit of acceleration you want, or every little bit of turning you want, and it holds it at that level. So if you push the button left a few times to turn left, it holds it turning left that much until you push it right again. It's... it's just... yeah. Okay, I assume everybody watching this knows what Tetris is. And yeah, we actually have one of the first computer versions of Tetris, or well, at least one of the first PC versions of Tetris. And it's, well, it's Tetris. But back then, this was new. Like, I mean, this was a new thing when we were playing this. And it was a very, well, different game. It was very addictive, very fun, despite the fact that, well, you can see on the screen, it's kind of weird controlling it, because first of all, the next thing doesn't, it isn't on by default, so you don't really know what piece is coming, you can actually turn the next option on and off. I think you can do that with the NES version as well, but I can't remember off the top of my head really. And then there's also the fact that the backgrounds change, and now this I found really curious, is you don't drop it just one block at a time, it drops all the way. That kind of makes the gameplay a little more difficult than one would imagine. Plus, this game isn't speed balanced, so if this wasn't a slow computer as it is, then those blocks would be falling really, really fast. No, oh, well, what are you gonna do? It's Tetris.
So yeah, that was just a quick look at my Tandy 1000 SX computer. It's old, it's outdated, and eh, it still has some charm. Like, I mean, my games still work on it, and eh, I can't use it with its original monitor anymore, unfortunately. That's why I have to connect it to my television. The last time I tried to use my monitor for it was a decade ago, and it sounded like it was going to explode. Yeah, that's why I'm using the television. Anyways, so that's all for this filler episode, so stay tuned for the next episode of Ancient DOS Games, which will be episode 41. And as for the hint for the next episode, it's kind of, I don't know, you play a hero who's chosen at random out of a phone book by a psychic. Yeah, figure that one out. Anyways, if you know what game that is, then send your guests to adg at pixelships.com. Make sure you tune in next Saturday to check it out. <laughs> if I recall correctly, I hate this game. <laughs>